Welcome to Popcorn for Breakfast, your favorite spoiler-free movie review podcast that tells you, should I skip it or should I see it? This week, we are seeing The Fall Guy with Aaron Taylor Johnson, Ryan Gosling, Emily Blunt, and a bunch of other stunt guys and gals. Let's review. is Popcorn for Breakfast, presented by St. Louis Area Smoothie Kings. Now, here are your hosts, Cam and Kirk. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Popcorn for Breakfast. That's right, the best spoiler-free movie review podcast in town. I don't think there's any other out there, any other... I don't know that there is. <laughs> I, I try to listen to movie podcasts from, from now and then, and, and first of all, there aren't that many Yeah, that are like... Full blown. Yeah. Full production. And I don't know that any of them just are slamming back to back spoil I mean not to toot our own horn, but I'm just saying. I know. I don't, I don't think they're slamming back to back spoiler reviews like we I are. Know. Spoiler free. We've got a niche market here, and again, we're always trying to bring you the best and the boldest and the earliest stuff we can to you. We got a free screening, early screening, press screening of the Fall Guy. David Leach is the Fall Guy with Ryan Gosling, Emily Blunt, Aaron Taylor Johnston, uh Winston Duke. A whole bunch of other people. Stephanie Shu. Stephanie Shu. She's in there so briefly, but she's there. She's there. If you're a Stephanie Shu fan, and I am. What what a time! What a what a interesting time at the movie theater we had. Yes, it's it's uh, you never know what you're going to get um, mm-hmm. when it comes to these screenings. That's what we've learned, mm-hmm. and I'm always the energy is always high. I have to say, yeah. And this is an interesting one because the, you know the movie is the Fall Guy. Some people, I, I'm speaking for myself, but I mean, I, 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 not just me. I'm sure there are others, right? Right? <laughs> yes. Um, they didn't know that this was based on something. Can you believe it? They wouldn't know? Of course um, not. That totally wasn't me as we were sitting down for this movie. No. <laughs> uh, this is based on a 1980s television series. And so whenever we get these screenings, there, there, are, there is press. Um, sometimes it's only press. Sometimes it's a, it's a mixture. And uh, there were some fans of the original series in our screening, which was exciting. We got to talk to a few of them. Yeah. And I'm not very familiar with the series. I understand the synopsis. I tried to look into it a little bit before we went to our screening. Um, it's not streaming anywhere, though. Uh, a little birdie told me you might be able to find some episodes somewhere, like maybe uh, YouTube. Yes. A couple episodes. Uh, you didn't hear that from us. Right. Um, Universal. We don't <laughs> know if that's legal or not. I don't even know if it's true. Okay. <laughs> so let's just, let's just keep that between us, us gals. But um, <laughs> yeah, so this is, this is an interesting movie. It's a movie based on a television series from the early 1980s starring Lee Majors and uh, Heather Thomas. And uh, the basic premise of that was stunt guy, who moonlights as a uh, as a bounty hunter or someone who's a bit of a adventurer and opportunist of sorts. Yeah, so. trying to make ends meet and uh, it's a cool concept. It's a very modern concept. Yeah, I feel like I mean it works for both, but I mean this is uh, it certainly works now. I wonder if this is successful. If we could see a spinoff CBS series sometime next fall, NBC. But yes, <laughs> it would be. I think it would be NBC. But yes, uh, we could. Yeah, we could. It's coming. It's coming. Well, we're going to dive right into things. <laughs> Maybe I should say dive roll since we're <laughs> talking about <laughs> you stunts. Could. We're going to do several somersaults across this table, as you will see, into our superlatives. We're going to talk about best actor, best supporting actor, showstopper, director's shoes, and our final thoughts and score tonight. And we'll kick it all off with our best actor, which we'd like to call. And the Oscar goes to Cam. Tell us. Oh. Who is your favorite actor in this film? Well, I have to go with someone uh, who really is one of my favorite actors ever. Um, I don't think that's hyperbolous to say. It's it's Ryan Gosling. Mm. I think Ryan Gosling is fantastic. I know I'm not alone in that belief. I know that many people love him. I mean, he, he is the quintessential movie star. He's charming. He's hilarious. I mean, really hilarious. I've talked about it a lot on this show. Uh, he is one of the best comedic actors out there, if not... I mean, I don't know. He's he he might be the best mainstream comedic actor that there is. Yeah, like, best uh, best leading man actor. Yeah, yeah. And, and someone who's not a comedian by trade, correct? Um, but is someone who just has that. But he's he's got a lot going on in this movie. It really is. I mean, I know the billing is Ryan Gosling and and Emily Blunt, and Emily Blunt certainly has a huge role to play in this movie. But the movie is the Fall Guy. Ryan Gosling is the Fall Guy, and. 
he really carries this movie. Um, I think in so many ways he's asked to do so much. I yes. mean, I, I think it's, it's a, uh, it's a really demanding movie for him. I just think that so much of the emotional pathos, like rests on his shoulders. So much of the story rests on his shoulders. So much, so, so many of the laughs rest on his shoulders. It's, there is just a lot going on. He, may in fact be the only one who is equipped to handle it all. I think he does a really good job. I think he elevates this movie, um, and he, he does all the things that Ryan John Ryan Gosling does. I'm and getting, Ryan Johnson. And Ryan Johnson. Yes. I'm getting Aaron Taylor Johnson <laughs> in my head. But all of the Ryan Gosling things are on full display here. Um, the chemistry with Emily Blunt is electric. I mean, they're both super charming individuals who yeah. just really fit in with this uh love story dynamic very well with each other. Um, and I, I thought it was excellent. So Brian Gosling, not a surprise by, by any means, no. but um, just an, another great performance by him. I think it all goes back to his goosebumps TV series days. And it always does his Mickey mouse clubhouse. Uh, sorry, Mickey mouse club uh, yeah. days as well with Britney Spears, Justin Timberlake, the whole gal, the whole gang is there. That's right. That's I'm going to go with miss Emily Blunt as my Oscar goes to best I love actor. It. She's fantastic. I mean, who would have thought that the other secretary in The Devil Wears Prada would be such an acclaimed figure and staple in American cinema and, and British cinema too, because obviously she's from the other side of the pond. She's fantastic. She's, uh, she's grounded. She takes some uh, moments of the script that are really honestly poorly written dialogue moments and she makes them work like you can actively see her brain <laughs> uh, hide the fact that it's a really just bland moment and she goes for it uh, you can also see uh, some unexpected fight choreography come out of her uh, did not expect the that not a spoiler but just kind of fun uh, never seen her in, in that kind of a role past Sicario but she mostly had a gun in Sicario so this was very fun and she was very good at it there were there, it, there were just mind-blowing moves in there uh, I really loved the moments where she had to be in the the romantic uh, lens and you you see some flashbacks of of Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt together and you're like oh I do believe that they are in love even though everyone obviously knows her she's married to John Krasinski and they very much are in love so it's always hard when you're in the public eye that much to then go do a movie where you're very in love with your character uh, like newly newly in love just love birds like it's very hard to to break that and she did a great job in making me forget all about John Krasinski so great job Emily Blunt all around yeah it pained me that I couldn't choose Emily Blunt I mean I could have I guess uh yeah I, that but I didn't you you know how much I love Emily Blunt I think she is criminally underrated even mm -hmm. despite the fact that she gets huge roles but like can we get her a good script please? yes <laughs> can we get her like a well-written character please I, like I'm begging she's got so much range I'm, I'm thrilled that you you brought up both that she was helping this screenplay out a lot yep. in some of her scenes and that she was in Sicario because yes. I think people forget about that. And she's a beast in that movie. She's a beast in everything. She's such a force of nature. Yeah. Um, so thank you for bringing that to light. She's a very smart actor and the right script has not come across her desk. Although maybe, maybe edge of tomorrow was very smart for her. Yeah, but I mean, obviously she, showcase Tom more. She's had great roles and I, and I, you know, I'm not one of these people who feel like her role as Kitty Oppenheimer was poorly written or didn't show. I, I thought she was phenomenal. She was great. That. Um, but just more often than not, I just, I constantly feel like she's being underutilized. Mm -hmm. And, um, I felt like that at points during this movie for sure. Uh, but to, to your point, she, she really grabs the bull by the horns and is just like, I'm going to make, I'm going to put my imprint on this scene. And that's what, that's what you got to love about her. Yep. Yep, time for her to do a biopic. I don't know who she'll play, but that's going to be the one. Next up, we're going to talk scene stealers, the best supporting actor. Cam? Who do you have for this second spot on the list? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll have to check the tapes on whenever we reviewed Bullet Train, which is another um, David Leach film. I, I think there's a pretty good chance that Aaron Taylor Johnson made an appearance as one of our superlatives there, maybe even as scene stealer. Uh, I think he's a scene stealer in this movie as well. He just, he fits in so well with what David Leach does. I think that... Um, you know, I always find with, with David Leach films, I, I say always, he doesn't have that long of a filmography, but like of, of the films that he's directed more recently, 
there are some tone issues at times in terms of like they're trying to pack a lot of comedy in and sometimes the tone is too far, not enough, it's inconsistent, whatever. But Aaron Taylor Johnson and him just seem to jive. Mm-hmm. Like they're they're just like on the same page because every scene with Aaron Taylor Johnson was high energy, hilarious. Aaron Taylor Johnson is just totally confident. He's he's not pulling any punches. He's just like well with leaning a body in. like that. I'd be <laughs> confident too. I just mean like he he's confident in what he's saying. You know, his 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 line delivery is is always funny. It's it's uh, like I said. He's he's not pulling any punches. He's just going straight for it. Totally fearless. I mean, they're just like go crazy, and he he does. And in this movie, I thought it, like the laughs per capita driven by his character were so much higher than anybody else. Mm-hmm. Um. He he is a true scene stealer in every sense of the word in this uh, this movie and um, yeah I I think he, him and David Leach they got to stick together they do. they're 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 crushing it I thought the, the bullet train performance and then this one I mean I don't need to see anything more they're a good pairing uh, you stole my scene stealer you ha I'm very Take mad that. at you I just have to point out that Sorry, one my of my glasses are fogging up oh that's okay one of my favorite things that Aaron Taylor Johnson does in this movie because uh, the movie is a movie within a movie obviously they're filming a movie and it's about the stunt people around it uh, is that <laughs> Aaron Taylor Johnson's character in the movie within the movie he basically sounds like Matthew McConaughey <laughs> yes. on steroids and it is it uh, aggressively increases every scene that he <laughs> takes and i absolutely loved it, it it's was, so good i was cackling it was like so i said it, it is like he is the most consistent source of laughs in that movie yes. like if he's on screen you're getting good genuine laughs nothing cheap nothing milking it he's doing something ridiculous and hilarious and totally him and it's just great yes so i'm mad at you but i guess i will choose i did have a a, a next in nice and that would be mr winston duke you know him of course oh, yes as mbaku from Black Panther and from all the Avengers films. Uh, and from Us. I thought he was really good in Us. Oh my gosh. Jordan Peele film. He was so good in Us. Yeah. I don't even like horror movies all that much, but that was incredible. That movie was really incredible. I know people will put that sidebar, put that Jordan Peele movie below, like nope and everything. I'm like, mm that's his second best right there, Us. I mean, I'll, I may have to fight you for that, but... Uh, I'm just saying. Us is a really good movie. That's why I hate ranking Jordan Peele movies because it's like... One A, one B, one. You know, like the, it's like here's three really amazing movies. Why don't you rank them? I hate that. <laughs> well, it's your fault because I had to bring it up because you said <laughs> us. Anyways, Mbaku, Mbambe, uh, Winston Duke is in this film, and there's something so mature about his experience uh, in front of the camera and all of his acting experience that he knows exactly what he's going for. He has lined out all of his acting tactics and choices that when you see him on screen, everything is intentional. It's very believable. There's nothing that's uh, that's him versus his character. Uh, what I also loved about this is everything uh, that I've seen him in, he's always been covered up entirely, right? So in Black Panther, he's got his, his warrior robe on for most of it, right? Uh, in Us, he's got the red jumpsuit we got to see his arms we got to see his like his legs like he wore a costume that fit him and that wasn't uh to like encourage or emphasize his his height Mm -hmm. and to make him like a bear figure and your boy is jacked and he is fast and i am so i was so impressed with that uh, in addition to in, in his his stunt work within the the movie and also in addition to how much and how consistent he was in this film always good to see him pop on screen all of his jokes landed uh, even despite the the shortcomings of the script he made it work very well so Winston Duke bravo you're a seasoned vet in my eyes yeah I don't think he had much to work with no I mean but he's he's creating something out of nothing he's like you're not gonna give me a character I'm gonna make one like, you know <laughs> I'm, I'm just I'm that I'm gonna be a pro and I'm gonna I'm gonna make it happen and yeah his physicality like you said is such a huge part of this performance and um yeah I mean you, what's not to love about Winston Duke honestly he's so great he's so great how about let's talk about showstopper I want to hear about your favorite production quality or or theming that made you say wow I wish I would have written that yeah I'm I'm not gonna t- I, I want to take the easiest one which is like 
I mean, which you're allowed to take it. I'm not saying that won't be a slide against you if you take it, <laughs> but like, I really want to take like the stunts and everything. And if we, if neither of us get into it, we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit, mm-hmm. but what I want to take is kind of the commentary on Hollywood, like modern Hollywood. I feel like it's a, you know, lots of movies are about movies and, and lots of filmmakers make movies about new Hollywood, old Hollywood, whatever. Uh, there's, it's not uncommon to see theming that, that addresses what's going on in Hollywood, but this was a little bit of a different flavor with this one, Mm -hmm. you know, talking about, um, I mean, they said it even in the press trunk, like this is a love story to stunt people and the unsung heroes that make films happen. And there's a lot of like movie making that you get to see in this movie, which is really cool. Uh, but there's also a ton of a ton of commentary, and, and I, because we're spoiler free, I'm not going to tell you what they say about any of this stuff. But there's a there's a lot of stuff addressing um, visual effects and uh, the use of uh, deep fake techno- tech, tech, technology, or uh, you know, uh, lots of I mean, technology in in general, yes. AI, uh, all of these things that sort of came up during the writer strike, etc. But also um, the kinds of movies that are being made in Hollywood right now and the stories that are being told. There's just, there's a lot of little nuggets in there sprinkled throughout where it's like, it's there if you want it. If you know, if you want to pick up what they're laying down, you, you can have it, but it's also, it doesn't, um, it, it's material, but it doesn't interfere with the film in any way. Right. Like you could watch it and not take away any of that. And the effect of the film wouldn't be lost on you per se. Mm-hmm. But if you're, um, reading the tea leaves, there's just a lot there to read into. And you go, Oh, I think I understand how David Leach and um, his, his writing partner drew Pierce in this movie, how they're feeling and, and what the sort of inspiration was for this. And there's some pretty th- thoughtful stuff in there actually, um, which I was very pleasantly surprised with. Yes. Um, my showstopper has to do with the camera work with the cinematography. Mm-hmm. So the movie within the movie that we're seeing the goal here is to find a way to um, show us that we're behind the scenes of this. Uh, similar to the, uh, I always like to reference the Indiana Jones Disney World stunt show. Yeah, exactly. The best. I see it every time I'm in Florida. It's awesome. <laughs> it's so good. And I really felt like we were there. Like we saw the the cameras. We saw uh, the the what do you call it? The dollies. We saw it, we saw all of the crew, all of the stunt men and women. It, it was really incredible, and in how they swirled us into that world, li- quite literally, and swirled us out and back into the world of the movie story. Uh, There's some very intentional uh, camera work and mise-en-scene a- action happening with the camera and the movement and the dancing of the camera. And I was very much it, very engaged into all of that. So bravo, David Leach, the, the, you stuntman. It's, it's as if... Uh, it's as if he was thinking, what if uh, what if the camera could be its own character and walk around this set and show you what's going on and what's going on in the lives of these characters? So that really struck me. Yeah, I mean, it is it is immediately striking right from the beginning of the movie. You get something that just feels altogether unique um, where <laughs> you're watching a movie where they're walking through a movie set and, yeah. and, and you're like, you know, some of this is probably part of the actual movie set that they're, (laughs) you know what I mean? It's like they have like a set and then a a setup and then a a setup, but they're probably sharing parts of it. I mean, it's like, it's really, it's, it's, it really hits you right away that you're like, Oh, this is something uh, quite different. And and I, I love that you're talking about the, the camera work because I think David Leach uh, on his films that, you know, he's just trying to make it interesting. Mm-hmm. And, and you got to credit that. Like, it's not bland in any no. way, shape, or form. It's not necessarily, like, one specific aesthetic. He's not, like, a yeah. director who has, like, he's not like Wes Anderson, where it's, like, these are the types of shots that are a part of my filmic language, and these are the types of aesthetics that I yeah. choose. It's just, like, he's looking at it as, like, I, at least I think, what is the most interesting way to tell this scene? Yeah. What is the most interesting way to tell this particular movement? You know, if they're going this way, sure. I could just like pan along with them or cut, 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 or we could make it a little bit more dynamic. I just think it, 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 it just kind of makes you feel like there was thought behind it. Movement is the key word because a lot of times you think of the, the, the biggest directors out there and you see a shot and you're like, 
oh my gosh, that's that movie. And yeah, you're like, look right. at look at the color, look at the placement of the actors, look at what I what am I what am I feeling from this ve- this single image? And as as incredible as that is, it's also incredible to be blown away by the movement of the camera. His shtick, his not gimmick, but his art is the movement of that camera, and it's shown through all of his films thus far. Which makes sense because I mean he's he's uh, his background is in stunts right. as a stunt coordinator and, and a stunt man, and if there's one thing you would probably pick up as a stunt person is what directors are trying to accomplish with certain big action shots mm-hmm. and why they work and what they're trying to get, and so I think it's cool. I think it's really yeah. cool that he approaches it from that lens because it's a different perspective, but one that I think is just very easy to look at, and there's a lot of movement and, and kinetic energy to it that you can just it's really just kind of a treat to the eyes you can just kind of you focus on all these little different yeah. moving pieces and it's really nice it's true showstopper part two the stunts obviously from the very first uh, beat to the f- the final one they're sprinkled throughout here there's never uh there's never at least i feel there's never a forced stunt i'm never like Oh my gosh, why did they do that? Because they build it into the fabric of the story for it to you always to be ready for a next stunt. And they never build it to like escalate, escalate, escalate. Every stunt has to be bigger than the last. Nope. It's just sprinkled very dynamically with different variants of stunts. And it's all very exciting to watch. Yeah, and, and it reminds me, you know, speaking of David Leach, one of his first credits he actually wasn't credited was for john wick he co-directed that with chad stileski but he was not credited on the film because of director's guild and all that yeah but john wick is something that comes to mind where it's like there is no sliding scale upward on action set pieces in those movies it's just like each one needs to have its own identity as Mm -hmm. an action set piece but it doesn't have to get bigger 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 because there's just a limit to that yes Uh, uh, case in point fast and furious like what (laughs) (laughs) there's just there's only so far you can go and it just bigger is not always better in the sense of stunts it's it's the creativity of it and this movie definitely had that vibe where it was like let's just we're gonna see a bunch of different types of stunt set pieces Mm -hmm. Uh, they actually they had somebody on set who was credited as a stunt designer on this movie which is believed to be the first time that credit has ever been used and i think they're hoping you know they had kind of spoken about it that it will spark some change in the recognition of stunt and the artistry of it so that's really cool um they do some really cool stuff and it's not to say they don't use cgi i mean they certainly do and 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 david leach has used a ton of both in his career. You know, he's not necessarily like everything has to be practical, but the stuff they could do practical, they did. And Mm -hmm. they did, you know, they rolled a car eight and a half times, which is the first time that's ever happened. Um, They, they jump, uh, what was it like 250 feet or something like that. Yep. Um, They, they do a lot of stuff that you just don't see done very often. And that's just really cool. Yeah. Uh, go watch Argyle if you would like CGI. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and now let's talk about the things we didn't like about this movie. Cam, put your director's shoes on. I'll, yeah. I'll wait while you lace them up. Make sure the bunny ears, right? Yeah. Just yeah. The, 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 around the tree. And uh, do you, do <laughs> I you got double, it. Do I, you, I'm good. I'm good. Minor Velcro, <laughs> actually. <laughs> I'll have you know. Perfect. I double knot every day of my life. <laughs> I'll have you know. <laughs> Tell me what you didn't like about this movie. Yeah, I mean, speaking to David Leach's prior filmography, talking about John Wick, he's also the director of uh, Deadpool 2, the director of Atomic Blonde, Bullet Train, um, what else am I forgetting, Hobbs and Shaw, um, and a few others. I think the one other thing that sticks out that's not, not good about his movies is they don't always have a discerning edit on them. Mm-hmm. There's never much of a sense of like, this like that they took things out. They leave too much in is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So there needs to be a more discerning edit. There needs to be, um, there's too much fluff and filler. There's too much exposition, which is crazy for a primarily action director, but he bogs his movies down with exposition and sure it's in the screenplay, but it's your job working with your editing team. And as the director to say, you know what? This was in the screenplay. It does have a purpose, but it actually, we can rework that or we can cut this particular part out and add something else here. And I, I felt very much this way with Bullet Train and I felt very very much this way with this movie. There's just too 
much when there doesn't need to be yes. like you're just, you're, there's so many scenes, particularly in, in the, the early half of this movie where it's just like, why are we still here? We're just meandering. I mean, it's like lingering and, me- and meandering our way through this movie when you're like, this movie could be a 90 minute movie and yes. it's like, it's closer. I don't know where it, it, it officially clocks in at, but I think we left the movie theater like two hours and 10 minutes after, um, it started or something like that. And there's just no need for, for all of that. And it's trying to do character stuff, but I, to me, everything that it does in, in that fluff is, is to the detriment of the character building. I don't think it helps at all. And the same thing, like with jokes on some of these scenes, it's like, it feels like they drag out these scenes just to try to milk a joke to ensure that they get a laugh. They're like, hit it again, hit it again, mm-hmm. hit it again. So that eventually the audience like has to laugh <laughs> at some, at, po- at certain points I felt like they were being like, laugh, laugh at this, you know, <laughs> like they just, we're going to keep throwing at it until you do. And, um, I felt like that was unnecessary. I just really feel like somebody should have combed over this movie, especially in that early half and been like, nope, not this, not this. There's just so many scenes where you're like, come on, get to the point. We understand what you're trying to do. Let's move on. It's too much. Yeah. There's literally, a, <laughs> spoiler, a line in the movie that says, we're tangled in exposition. And I was like, yes. <laughs> yes, we are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, that's funny. It's it's uh, meta in the way that you don't want it to be. Right. Like you're, <laughs> you're trying to make a joke about action movies, and you're doing that exact thing. Yeah. And uh, it could have been, you know, that reference uh, was like, you know, the the villain monologuing, you know, tradition. But it, it applies to this entire film. Mm-hmm. Um, there's there's so much that could have been left on the editing floor. Uh, it has poor pacing because of that. It doesn't yes. move. You have these incredible action sequences that never feel too long. But all of the individual exposition and talk and character building scenes always feel too long uh just like you said those they're milking the jokes in a way that a stand-up comic would but it's live and you have immediate uh interaction and it makes sense there so i don't know if david leach also wants to moonlight as a uh as a stand-up comic and he's like (laughs) dipping his toes here so that might be uh something to explore uh with yourself sir and too many false endings for me for this i mean this could have ended six different times and I was happy with the very first one. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's clean. I like it. It's it's succinct. And I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go home. I've, I've completed my journey with these characters. And then it kept going. <laughs> so that was a little upsetting. Um, those are my director's shoes for The Fall Guy. And yep. now we just want to give you our final thoughts and score to give you an idea of where we land with this all of this, this, uh, this bubble, this, uh, this exposition, this tangle of exposition. Yes, we we are. Uh, <laughs> we're uh, tangled in exposition, as it turns out. <laughs> oh gosh, we're going to review everything we've ever recorded <laughs> after this. Cam, go ahead. Final thoughts and score. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, it, it's it's fine. It's it's not great. I think it will be a crowd pleaser. I think there will be plenty. Of, judging by our our audience, I think there is a demographic of people who will find this very enjoyable. Um, it's a little bit too. Um, it's almost like a like a heart rate thing where it's where, where it's like you don't have uh, a steady wave. It's like jerky. Where yep. It's like cool big action set piece, and then we're here for a long time. You're like, when's the next heartbeat? Is is this person alive? Is this movie alive? Um, at times, it feels <laughs> like no. Uh, and and you're you're bored in a movie where you certainly should never feel that way. This is an action movie. This is the Fall Guy. It's based on an action TV series. You can, you, you can even take liberties with the tone and make it overly goofy because that was the as I understand the nature of the show mm-hmm. as to just like kind of go far with it and so you had all that working for you and yet still you bog it down still you um make it longer than it needs to be you don't thoughtfully edit the film it's just it's got problems for sure ryan gosling and emily blunt do a ton to lift this movie up i think i fret to imagine what what this movie would be without them because they're chemistry their charisma their skill is what carries this movie yeah. through the doldrums and there are times where you're like have mercy on ryan gosling don't make him read <laughs> these lines don't make him read these jokes <laughs> that are are not that funny and you're making him really fish for a laugh and it's like it's just it's it's not always working the stunts 
are really cool. There's some, there's some really cool stuff and there are some really good genuine laughs in this movie. It's just the, the gaps in between those and the gaps in between the big action set pieces and the big emotional, um, you know, kind of milestones in the movie are, are too wide and there's too much junk in the middle of it that just doesn't work for the movie. Um, there are characters that are totally unnecessary, <laughs> completely unnecessary in this movie that are given too much time. There are characters mm-hmm. that are just aren't fleshed out at all. Um, there are caricaturish performances from certain characters or certain actors. Um, it's, it's got problems. I feel like this is mean, but I'm just gonna give it. Um, I said I was gonna give it. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna stay strong. I'm gonna give it a five, six out of ten. Okay. Kernels. Excellent. Hopefully, be nice, guys. I, I, I'm not trying to be super mean. This is so hard. This one is very hard to score because there are. As we've been talking about it, I've had. Uh, I feel like I've had more fun talking about it than I did on my viewing yes, of definitely. it. I'm like, wait a second, there, there are some really fun moments of that. Uh, it's very bright. It's very silly. Um, I sometimes when I I watch a movie, if I become bored or I lose the suspension of disbelief uh, that I'm in it, that I'm that I'm, I'm in this story, I will start a running number in my head, and I'm like, right now this movie is this. This is the rating I would give it. And then from there, if I, if I acknowledge that, I'm like, okay, great. Let's see if it can be better or worse. And it kept ticking down for me, <laughs> unfortunately. You're, you're, the, <laughs> you're the tipper that lays the dollars on the table <laughs> and says, this is what your tip is. You can either add or subtract from it with how you perform. You're that guy. That's me. That's you. Oh, no. And that guy sucks. That guy does I, suck. I, I get what you're saying, and I agree with it. I'm just <laughs> It's exactly that. Oh my gosh! I'm gonna start putting popcorn kernels. <laughs> yeah, just on lay the out table. ten kernels and just eat them as. <laughs> <laughs> Every time we do director's juice. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's fantastic! I think that I I'm really sad that it wasn't more entertaining, but um, I'm gonna give it uh I'm gonna give it a higher score than I initially planned. Um, as we've been recording, my heart has changed. And I've added some dollars back to the table. <laughs> I'm going to go 6.1 out of 10 kernels. Hey, and the Grinch with his Grinch feet, <laughs> ice cold in the snow. <laughs> Your heart grew three sizes throughout this review. <laughs> and that's telling because, man, when comedy fails for me, I can't stand it. Yeah, that's a death sentence to, for you, I've noticed. It's, I can't. Yeah. Like, there are plenty of comedic series that have been recommended to me and I'll start them and I'm like I can't that's an immediate no <laughs> I can't do it because comedy is so is so layered and it's so technical uh, and you either have it or you don't and when you don't have it it bothers me to my core um, so thankfully even even Ryan Gosling milks some things in here yeah oh yeah not on his fault he was just you know it was that's a director thing honestly um, but it, the moments that he does have, he he shines pretty bright. So it's it's true, and I think that they underuse his comedic skill set too. Yeah. They kind of really focused in on like his really like sarcastic mm-hmm. um, traits, which he's he's one of the best there is at that. The whole like sarcasm, deadpan delivery, he's mm-hmm. great. But he's also really good at slapstick. He's really good at like goofy, silly. He's good. He he can do it all. He's good at, at applied comedy for the story. Like, uh, yeah, the, that's all he does in the nice guys. Like yep. it is, it's, there's no slapstick. There's no deadpan. It is strictly within the realm of that character. <laughs> yes. Like, oh my gosh, it's incredible. And even, even La La Land, which I recently rewatched, it's like, there are moments where he is just like screaming, but it is the funniest thing I've ever seen yes. in my life. Yeah. So his, his understanding uh, of comedic structure is very high, very high comedic intelligence. Yeah, so it hurt to see him struggling at times yes. in this movie to like get the response that he wanted or strike the tone that he wanted because it just wasn't there. And it wasn't it wasn't his fault to your point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean I mean, as my score reflects, I'm like pretty mixed, pretty ambivalent on this movie. Like yeah. it really, truly like there's some good stuff. There's some bad stuff. It's really a mixed bag of a movie. Um I hope people enjoy it. I think a lot of people will. I think it will. Uh, I mean, I think they're. It's like going to win 10 Oscars. No, I think no. we can call it out right <laughs> definitely now. Definitely not. You heard it. Popcorn for breakfast. But I think that there is definitely, like I said, there is a demographic for this movie with with which it will knock it out of the park. There, yeah. I mean, and some of those people were in our screenings tonight because they were 
loving it. Mm -hmm. I mean, loving it. So for we'll the, see. For the first year that the this coming year, the Academy is going to have an actual stunt award category, and I would be hard pressed to see who else can tackle this. I mean. We do have Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. <laughs> it goes to Dune. It's like, oh, <laughs> man. We created this award for the Fall Guy. <laughs> it's like, wait, that was a CGI moment that they submitted for. I don't understand No, the this. sandworms are real. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, Timothy Chalamet did that. Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> listen, we are so glad you came out with us today to learn about and listen to us chat about the Fall Guy. It's going to be in theaters this weekend. That's right. May you, guys, third. you guys go see it. Listen to us. Uh, sometimes we give these reviews and we chat with some of our listeners and they say, you guys got it wrong. Here's why. And Often. We would <laughs> we would love to hear <laughs> those opinions. Always tell us what you think. We, we love to hear that too. Start the, Continue the conversation on any of our, our channels. Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube, on Discord, and chat with us on just random stream of thoughts at that time. Um, we're on Twitter or X. We have Facebook. We have Instagram. We have it all. TikTok. We've got all these sorts of fun things happening at all times our website popcorn the number four breakfast.com popcorn for breakfast.com where we have blogs coming out almost at a weekly rate we want to hear from you we want to see you thank you so much and we'll see you at the movies peace